My husband, the yeah. human male, has never liked our son and told me many times. He never really bonded with our son since he was born. As time went by, he felt our son, one cried too much as a baby, one had difficulty controlling his emotions as a toddler and cried too often, three was spo a spoiled brat who didn't care about pleasing the parents, four was a picky eater, five was pessimistic in nature. He felt constantly disappointed and disliked our son more and more. We also have a younger daughter. He bonded instantly and adores her. He is a great husband and helps a lot around the house. Aside from numerous chores, he cooks breakfast and dinner and prepares his lunch for the kids. Or prepares lunch for the kids, sorry. However, our son sometimes does not like what he cooks and complains. Yesterday, our son complained that he did not like dinner and asked, why don't you make things that I like? It really hurt my husband's feelings and he was very angry and scolded him. Then he was so angry that he just shut down and didn't interact with anyone. After the kids were down, my husband told me he disliked our son and never loved him and he was losing hope. I felt really hurt and sad that my husband said these things, and I knew he meant it. In my eyes, my son is a sweet, kind little boy. He cries and is sometimes picky about food, but these are no all normal five-year-old behaviors. He eats much better than other kids his age, and he is tall and strong. He often finishes his food, though he doesn't complain. Though he does complain if he doesn't like what he eats. I think my husband has unrealistic standards for a five-year-old, and these unrealistic standards are making him unhappy, so much so that he can be depressed because of his interaction with our son. I asked him to consider seeing a therapist, but he is very resistant to the idea. He said he would be useless. He said it would be useless because he knew what the therapist would say. He felt the therapist would ask him to change to change because one can only change yourself. But he said he didn't want to change. It is our son who needs to change. I don't know what to do. On one hand, I tell myself it is a father and son relationship, and it is up to them to maintain the relationship, and there isn't much mum can do. This thought saved me from constant agony and disappointment. However, I feel sad for my son that he has a father who doesn't love him and I am worried how it will affect him. I feel sorry for my husband too. I feel helpless and sometimes depressed because of this. What do I do? Is there something I can do to improve their relationship or should I just accept it? So, there's a few notes that I have on this, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts before we uh, get into them. Man, my initial reaction is he clearly must not have a great relationship with his own father <laughs> because if he is struggling to bond, I mean, I almost feel like, you know, it's like the quintessential man thing to think like, well, I want a son, you know? So like then to say, Oh man, I just don't love him and I never will. I just have to believe that he does not have a great relationship with his own father, especially because it says that he bonded instantly with the daughter. So that just seems very strange to me it's not that he doesn't want kids he just there's something about the son and it's got to be his own relationship with his own father so there's definitely something there and a lot of the time we do as a result uh and it's perhaps not intentional but we do tend to um, innately follow what our parents did and if he had that kind of relationship with his father then it's very likely that uh you know he's, he's going to replicate that with his own son uh, trent did you have any thoughts on that yeah it's it's interesting to me we have a dichotomy uh in in our society on one hand it's like so often we see uh parents uh coddle their kids for way too long and then this is the i think this is the flip side of the coin where um if you're reading this if you take out the fact that they're talking about a five-year-old son i would immediately think that they're talking about a 13 year old son or something like that but you know just just based on like how how it's being explained um, and then, you know, it's like a five-year-old. It's like, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know any five-year-old that's super great at controlling their emotions. Um, so it's almost like the expectations. I mean, my, my initial reaction, like Jake said, this, this person obviously has probably a bad relationship with their father, um, and maybe had a little bit too much, uh, burdens put on his own shoulders at too young of an age. I think you're right there. And, and it also comes down to like the standard that I think he holds himself to. And he's not, it feels like he's not living up to that standard himself. And therefore he's kind of projecting that onto his son, uh, who's five. I mean, it's kind of crazy to uh, expect these things out of a five-year-old. Um, like I get it, man. My son's three and he has, I want to say pushed me to my absolute limit, but close. And it can be hard at times. And you've got to um, understand that kids need to uh, test their boundaries as well. And they are also, I mean, specifically revolving around the, the, the mealtime thing. Um, they're figuring out what it is they do and don't like. And the way that they do that isn't through like experimenting with like Indian food or something. It's uh, 
telling their parents they don't like what there is. Uh, so it's um, <clears throat> interesting that he, he doesn't hold his daughter to the same standard as well. I think that the, there's a real, not only an internal conflict conflict with him, but there's obviously an, a conflict inside of his house. Because like his wife's going on about how good of a husband he is and how affectionate he is to his daughter, but yet he has drawn like this hard line with his son. And I, as men, I do believe that we hold our sons to a higher standard um, than our daughters or, or even ourselves, um, because innately we want to better ourselves for, or better our legacy for the next generation. And um, you know, we, we view that legacy as continued on through our sons, uh, primarily anyway. Um, so I think that there is like that um, dichotomy of standard and he's really, um, it's putting a bit too much on his son for being five and the impacts of this on his son are going to um, ultimately make him struggle with the relationship with the son and the son's development for life as well. It's um, they're really, really, really sad to see. And um, the fact that he's like showing affection to his daughter is only going to breed that level of jealousy. Um, and I wonder if um, the fact that he's trying to, to create that jealousy, if he feels jealousy as well. I've actually heard this from men that I, both that I've worked with and just from, from reading books and stuff um, that the, uh, when a, when a, a son is born, the husband can feel jealousy for the amount of attention he's taking away from his wife. And I wonder if that is, is manifesting in the fact that he, um, you know, isn't showing affection to try and, um, and his own, maybe not intentionally, but try to, trying to curb that, um, affection that is his wife's taking away or that his son's taking away from his wife. Pause for a second. This video is brought to you by Lords of X, a paid private community that gives men with good messages everything they need to grow their influence on X. With us, you get courses, accountability, networking, collaboration opportunities, and distribution to get more eyes on your content so you're able to grow your following faster. If you're serious about growing an online empire, then you're not going to find any better value than Lords of X. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to check it out. And with that, back to the video. It's funny that you mentioned that because at the very beginning, whenever, as we were reading along, the first vision that I had was almost like like the animal kingdom you see in the wild where like sometimes the adult male like kills the the offspring or something, you know, and like or or like with like prides of lions where like the the if a new male lion takes over the pride, the first thing he does is kill all the offspring of the previous, you know, alpha male or I guess. And it was like, man, that's what I was envisioning in the first one. It's like, is he trying to ostracize his son because he feels like he's gonna take over the family or something. I mean, it's, it's wild. Yeah. I mean, I mean, from an animalistic point of view, I can understand that. And it's interesting that you point that out actually, because I think that's a pretty good analogy. How, um, you know, the, the, the dominant male of the pack will go and, uh, you know, take out <laughs> without using, with using YouTube friendly language here, you know, <laughs> we'll go and take out the uh, opposition, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's, right. that's a really interesting observation there, Jake. No, every every chance that the the son has to the son is obviously reaching out when he says things like why don't why don't you make things that I like every time that he does something like that is an opportunity for for the father to have a bonding opportunity with his son for sure yeah um for whatever reason the the mother is uh um kind of kowtowing along with this with this sort of behavior the father is putting on and I know that she wants what's best for. She's trying to see both sides of it in in this, but I just, I don't know. I, I think that in this situation, the, the son's crying for help, even to his father, and and it's falling on deaf ears, so. Yeah, I would agree there, yeah, essentially, yeah. That's pretty sad to see, but uh, man, it's, there's a lot of hurt out there, and I'd say uh, over half of it's on Reddit. <laughs> it's, um, so <laughs> if you were to give these people this... Uh, let, let's say you were going to talk to the, the wife in the situation. What piece of advice would you give her? You want to go first, Jake? Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> so in almost everything that I ever write about marriage, one of the foundational things I always talk about is honesty and even the, when, even when it's tough honesty. So in, in my, if I was in that situation, I, the first thing I'm saying is, you need to have a let, let's have a draw in the sand in the draw the line in the sand type of conversation and say you know let's get to the bottom of the issues you've had with your dad because clearly that's got to be part of what is being projected onto our son because um, you know ultimately whether it's a, a responsibility lies in raising your kids in a quality environment and. Part of that is, you know, they're doing damage not only 
to the son, but to the future relationship between the son and the daughter as well. You know, because, you know, you fast forward this 15 years down the road and that son's not going to want to have anything to do with the sister either. And so um, for me, it's let's get to the bottom of what went on with your own father. You're saying that therapy isn't going to work, but we have to clearly do something because what we're doing right now isn't working. You know, the kid is five right now and he's already sort of passively lashing out by saying, why don't you do this? Why don't you make food that I like, you know, when he becomes 15 or 16, it's not going to be so passive as that the responses that he's going to have. So it's, there's got to be some honest conversations had. For sure. I think he's like uh, undermining his legacy as well. So it's, you know, through wanting his son to be better and to be tougher and to, you know, whenever eat his meal at the, at the most primal level, he's ultimately creating this, this wedge between um, him and his son. And I don't think uh, in this in this particular situation that it would really matter who the son was because there clearly is a deeper issue going on there but um speaking specifically to his wife trying to say like trying to push therapy onto a, a, and him facing that rejection is not going to get him to accept the problem really it comes down to offering them more opportunities to connect and uh, finding some common ground between them and uh, as much as it uh, might seem unreasonable to some i think that she has to be the mediator and find that middle ground because if uh, he's not going to, he's not willing to go to therapy, and he clearly isn't addressing this problem with any male friends that he has. Um, because otherwise, you know, they put him in, put him in line, hopefully. But um, he, uh, she really needs to be the mediator and facilitate this. Because I, I can one hundred percent understand. Like my son uh, has been challenging at times, and he continues to be. Um, but that's part of what it is to be a boy. You know, they test their limits. They want to see where they are. They want to find their place. They want to, um, you know, see how. Um, their actions impact you and uh, sometimes it can be uh, abrasive uh, to put it politely <laughs> but um, yeah absolutely ultimately it's come down to the amount of time that I've spent with my son that's really pulled him back like if I am busy with work or you know we have a few rainy days and I'm not able to work outside with my son which is something he really enjoys um, he starts acting up a bit more and really it's down to the amount of time that I'm able to spend with him and influence him that has uh, really brought us close together but uh, Trent, did you have something you wanted to add on the subject? Yeah, just to add on to what you said at the end, it's not, you can't change your, like your son, you try to steer him in the direction. It's not like the next day he's going to automatically respond positively to everything that you've tried to do. It's over time, you're nurturing him and getting him to generally go in that direction that you've been, that you've been kind of directing him in. Um, if I was giving advice to this, to this woman, I would say, like you said, she needs to be the mediator. She needs she for her to help smooth this over she needs to make comments to her son that her son's father that her husband loves him um and make sure that he knows that and fo- reinforce that behavior that he is loved by both of them um even though the father might um whatever say to her whenever he's in a mood that he doesn't love his son I, as long as he's not saying that to his son directly i don't think it said that um I think that uh, I think that she can help smooth that over on top of, you know, if there's things that her husband's doing that her son doesn't like, um, maybe she takes over doing those things and um, and removing that negative behavior uh, or even jumping in and saying, hey, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays are going to be the daughter's nights that she gets to pick the meal and Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays are the son's night and uh, Sunday um dad and i get to choose what we have whatever you know there's ways that she can remove some of these negative things um from happening uh things that are in her control um but obviously the real problem resides with the father i think at the end of the day but if i was giving advice to the the mom that's what i would say that's that's really good advice really sound i think um i really like the idea of the uh doing the split days for the uh, meals as as an ultimate solution um, it's a pity that seven isn't divisible by three, but uh, maybe on Sundays you could do half and half. <laughs> so, no, I really like that, man. It's a really good suggestion. Um, now, some of the comments I did notice were uh, basically going straight to divorce, which is a uh, very Reddit, very Reddit level. <laughs> but um, it's so it's so it's everywhere, man. It's yeah, everywhere. But there was one that specifically stood out to me, and um, I'll just read it out really quick here. Uh, Your husband is not a good dad. My heart breaks for that little boy. OP, your husband needs therapy. There is something deep there. 
And the fact that he blames his son for his actions is super shitty. I'll, I'll blank that out for YouTube. <laughs> but um, <laughs> here's the thing that really uh, I think is contradictory to that. Um, and you know, I'm not trying to take sides here or, or point out that you know that the husband's on the wrong or anything. But the immediate response here is your husband is not a good dad, but yet he seems to be in every other regard except to the son. And there, there's definitely something deeper at work here. Um, but it's a matter of, of getting to the bottom of it and you know, saying that somebody needs therapy is, again, very Reddit. <laughs> but um, there are other alternatives to things like therapy, um, you know, like actually having a family discussion about it or um, if she's close with his parents and talking to his parents and getting them to talk to him. Um, and again, that might be, like you said, Jake, you know, that he doesn't have a good relationship with his father and then highlighting that because um, obviously him talking to his dad isn't going to be a solution in that instance. Um, but there's, there's right. more to it than um, than we're being led to believe, I think, or, or being told rather. And, um, you yeah, know, the instant, you know, divorce or therapy, I, I just don't think is a, a sound enough advice for uh, this particular situation, but especially because he's so resistant to it. Yeah, I mean, like the whole divorce thing, everyone thinks is like the quick fix answer, but just imagine that. So that they split custody. Mm. So now imagine the son goes to the dad's house and the mom's not even there to facilitate or to mediate or, you know, something along those lines. So now what happens? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, that's almost like going to be even worse because now there's no one there to... to you know, be a buffer or anything, and, and, and who knows what happens. Yeah, I didn't even consider that uh, when I when I initially p picked out that comment, but that's that's yeah. a really good point. That's or he or he just wants the daughter and says the the yeah. son can stay with mom or whatever. Then yeah, you have a son that grows crazy. up with no father at all. Yeah, I mean, the neither neither is a good option. You know, I almost while you were reading this, I had another good idea for advice for the mom. Um, setting up play dates for the father with other five-year-old boys to see how, so that he has something to to compare uh, his five-year-old son to and see uh, that his reaction, that his expectations are just absurd and maybe even see that his five-year-old son is a lot better than most five-year-old sons are. Yeah. Um, you I, know what the perfect thing for that would be? Have the dad go volunteer at the local school. <laughs> because I, I will tell you, and my wife and I have this conversation regularly. My my, my kids are good kids. I don't, they're not perfect by any means, but they're good kids. But they there's still times where they you know get on my last nerve, and I sometimes question what I'm even doing or if I have any idea what I'm doing. But every day when I go back to school, I am immediately reminded within about the first thirty minutes of you know i've got to be doing something right because there is way worse situations out there by a lot so perhaps he could go volunteer at the local school i think it's a good idea well you know it's it's funny because as much as a lot of guys parents in general won't, but won't admit to it you know deep down we all do that comparison you know we always think, we all think oh look at what our child does and this other can't you know um it's just a perfectly natural thing i don't think there's any harm in it uh, because for the most part, we all know that children develop in different ways, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Saying that, <laughs> I took, I went, my, my, uh, I went to the city the other weekend, as you guys know, and um, my daughter has like, well, it was her first one having like a big dance meetup thing there, and my wife's friend has a son, uh, a daughter and a son. The daughter was there dancing, but her son, she's not unkind to him, but I can see how she can get frustrated with him. And I um, offered to take him, because uh, I was going to take my son to this Air Force Museum. And I, so I offered to take her son along. And I was like, what's the worst that could happen? He's a, he's a, you know, he's a good boy uh, and everything like that. I wasn't worried like he was going to run in front of a car or anything like that. Um, but just the difference in his behavior versus my son there uh, was just like <laughs> night and day. Well, he wasn't like naughty. He wasn't touching things he shouldn't. But um, just his unwillingness to pay attention or I have to tell him things multiple times. And I have to tell my son multiple th things multiple times sometimes as well. But uh, just, just the difference between the two was, um, you know, because I haven't, uh, you know, th this was the first time I'd taken care of somebody else's son. Uh, I've, I've watched somebody's daughter before, but not not a son. And it was just uh, quite eye-opening. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, my son, you know, he's can be frustrating or he won't listen or, or you know, whatever. Um, but one particular instance was my son wanted to learn about a jet engine and they have like a cut open jet engine there. I didn't see the inside of one either. It was quite quite interesting. So I was like watching and explaining what how I thought it would work. And um I was like, what do you think about that? You know, I won't say the name, but you know, 
uh, other other child and um i look up and he's like starting to walk away i was like hang on wait come back the time i saw like, him asking <laughs> questions about it i was like no we're not finished yet but it just wasn't interesting. he was done and um i could see that my son would get was getting a little bit frustrated because he wanted to learn about the jet engine he wanted to learn about the planes and where they sit this other boy was just like shoom, shoom, off to each each spot um so I, I think that was for me at least that was quite eye-opening and um how different boys can be uh, even when they're under a relative strange i mean i know i've known him for like over a year um but you know in a relative strain like not a parent um parent supervision and how um how just how different they can be and i think that's a that's a really good point going full circle ben black grant uh, there you know i think it's a really good point you know going in and volunteering at a school and seeing how other boys can behave and and um even if he doesn't admit it openly just internally comparing that and um understanding that you know all boys are different develop at different stages and the only way that he's going to form a connection with his son is he has to start he has to make the effort for that because otherwise it'll wind up you know um again not naming names but you know with a parent that gets frustrated with this boy and as a result they um don't necessarily see eye to eye and it can be lead to uh only it only leads to more frustration it's not going to like resolve itself it's uh, only going to create more more turmoil for the boy and um it's just a real shame because you know more boys out there need their fathers to be present and uh, I feel like a lot of them are getting robbed of that, um, not only through work, but just through the um, unfair expectations or um, through the, the influence of uh, forces outside of the family. I like it. I didn't even consider that maybe uh, maybe the father in the situation also doesn't have much experience with with kids in general or, or with with young boys in general. Maybe he has some nieces or something that he had expectate that he kind of had experience with, but he never had a, had a boy in his life. I mean, I think I, that's, that's probably a stretch, but maybe he just doesn't have experience with kids in general. Yeah, I was, and, uh, I was going to say, um, this interject there. No, I, when I had children, I didn't have a lot of experience with kids, but it was the, and you know, I was actually worried that I was going to be a bad parent. And because I was worried about that and I saw the flaws within myself, I went out of my way to read a whole bunch of material, a whole bunch of literature, um, both in child psychology, you know, development, stuff like that. Um, and I understand that not everyone has the time or the inclination to do that. But you know, there's like a desire inside. Well, I'd, I'd like to believe there's a desire inside every man. I'm not going on a big one here. I see your face there, Jen. I'm not going on a big one. But I well, I was just going to say, when you said like not everybody has the time to do that, but I, I think, I think, uh, I don't know. I think that's not a bad excuse. willing to make the time. There, there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think you guys get what I was, what I was trying to say there. And, um, yeah, I just think that there's like a desire inside every man, well, there should be a desire inside every man to do better for his kids. And when that desire is not there, there's something seriously wrong. And, uh, again, it's up to him. He's not going to change his son if he can't change himself. Um, you know, you don't, you can't demand respect. You only, you can only earn it. And that goes for kids as well. And he has to earn his son's respect before there's going to be any change. And to earn the respect, he has to become the kind of man that is respectable, at least to his son. Um, otherwise, his son's going to be looking up to fictional characters, essentially. And um, we all know how that ends. Yeah, he 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 called out his son in part of it. He called out his son for being emotional, but it's funny now. I yeah. I think he's actually kind of being emotional. You know, like well, it hurt his son's feelings that his son didn't like the food that he out. made or whatever. Yeah, like I mean that's. That's a little, that's pretty emotional. Yeah. I mean, be like, all right, well, guess you're making yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there's like a time for stoicism, but I don't think it's when you're with your kids. And, um, yeah. And not at the dinner table either. And I just think there's something wrong here. But, um, I think we've grilled this man enough. This, this <laughs> pseudo poor man. I don't know. I don't know if we are. Uh, maybe, maybe he's just time. not good at grilling. That's the problem. He's got to take some lessons <laughs> from Jake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, All right. that's why I'm on. That's why I'm on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll move on to another post now. I think uh, we'll leave this leave this poor man and his son alone, and uh, hopefully they're able to sort it out. And maybe they'll stumble across this video. Maybe we'll drop it in the Reddit post there. I've got a, I've got a. I don't know if you guys know, but I've got like a thousand karma account or something like that. So maybe I can drop a. I'm not a Redditor, but I did one post once. I got a lot of upvotes. So <laughs> maybe I can put it. Together. There we go. 